Hi, so today I want to review ThinkVision Monitor M14T and I want to show you how to connect it to your new M1 MacBook. I already unboxed it, but let's do it together again. So the box is quite small and nice. There is a manual here. Then there's a very nice sleeve for your monitor. Here is the main thing. And there is more. There is your nice pen. Something that I have no idea what the purpose of it is. And you have USB-C to USB-C cable. Nice and tidy, right? Let's go to good stuff now, which is the monitor itself. The monitor is very slim. I love the design. Um, here is for comparison a pen. And the stand is also quite tidy. It is almost the size of a laptop. Here is a banana for a scale. It is almost the size of one banana. Okay, let's connect it to our MacBook now. I personally use the monitor always in this position because then you can use your pen quite easily to write down the stuff. I have a bigger monitor. I use my MacBook monitor as a second monitor and this one as a third one. Um, maybe later I will make a review how you can connect multiple monitors your, to your MacBook M1, but there's already like lots of YouTubers that explained how to do it. Spoiler alert, you should have, you should use display link. The connection is very simple and minimalistic. You already have your one meter USB-C to USB-C cable. So MacBook M1s have two Thunderbolt ports, which you can also use for charging and also for display. You connect your monitor to it. There is this power button here. It is powered on. It's trying to understand the position and boom, you have your position. So you can primarily use your monitor in three positions. The default position that I personally use is to lay down like this. And then I can use my pen to draw stuff on it. You can also put it on the portrait mode like this or on the normal mode like this. As you can see, you can also put it a bit further away or more near you or you can even use it completely flat. Let's put it back to the position that I'm more comfortable with, which is this one. Um, regarding ports, you have some buttons here, function buttons, also for like um, bring bring like more light to the screen. Uh, then you have your function button here. You have your display port here. But also, you can use um, USB-C port here on the other side and the power button is here. I'll just put it on the ground. Um, what I love about this monitor is that you don't need to bring lots of cables. You just need this single USB-C cable. I connect it to the port of my MacBook. You can connect it to your Windows. You can connect it to your Android phone. But here, um, the MacBook is more tricky. So I'm exam 
I'm making an example by showing the MacBook one. So now I can use my pen to draw stuff on the OneNote notepad that I have. But there is a catch. As you can see, it functions perfectly. Um, the touch also functions perfectly, but it was not always like that. I had to use something that is called UDPP driver. And unfortunately, this one is not for free. There's a trial, but you have to purchase a license. If you buy it for the work, uh, your work can pay like, I think, 150 bucks. But if you want to buy it for your personal use, you again have to pay like a less amount of money, but it is, I, I would say it is quite expensive. Um, for me, it's worth it. And I would like to support the developers because look, they made such an amazing tool. So you can connect your touch to your MacBook. But of course, I understand not everybody wants to pay such a premium price. For the pen functionality itself, uh, uh, also I would like to mention that you have to pay for the driver if you are using a Mac OS. If you are using a Windows um, or Android, the Think Vision will work out of the box. But the touch functionalities are not supported on the Mac OS with, I think, any monitor, so you have to pay for this driver. It is more a Mac problem, not a monitor problem. I really like the feel of the pen. It is very responsive. I wouldn't really compare it to Wacom 1 or like any Wacom tablet, but it is on par with, I would say, Galaxy Tab or with, for example, Microsoft Surface. Um, I'm very happy with the results. As a bonus, you can see the comparison of MacBook monitor next to Think Vision in a bright summer day with maximum brightness. As you can see, the Think Vision one is a bit glossary, so there is a bit of reflection here. The MacBook uh, is better and more visible during the shooting of the video. I would say also in the video is a bit more drastic than it actually is. And uh, it is more visible than you can think. Also from the different viewing angles. I'm quite satisfied and happy with the result. Thanks again for watching the video. So as a conclusion, I love this monitor. I bought it so I can work from like a coffee shop or bring it to work as a secondary monitor. And I would recommend it to anyone that wants a second minimalistic monitor for their Mac or Windows or even Android. I mean, of course, for, for the Mac, there is a catch that the touch won't work out of the box. You have to pay for the driver, but there is also another version of this monitor that you can buy it doesn't have even touch functionalities and it is cheaper. I bought this one, I think for 300 and the non-touch version, I think is like 200 bucks. And um, yeah, I love it. I, whenever I am going for travel, I just disconnect it, put it like this. And there is a nice sleeve that comes with it. I put it inside the sleeve and boom. It comes with me in my backpack. Thanks a lot for supporting the channel, for watching the video. You know the drill. Subscribe, hit the like button, blah, blah, blah. I always answer the comments because the channel is quite small. So I have time for that. If you have any question regarding the monitor itself, please shoot the question in the comment section. Thank you guys. Have a lovely day. Enjoy your summer. Bye.